Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Today, we're going to break down an essential concept in macroeconomics, gross domestic product, or as it's better known, GDP. You've probably heard GDP mentioned in the news or seen it discussed in economic reports, but what does it actually mean? How is it calculated? Why is it so important and does it has any limitations? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. What is GDP? First things first, what is GDP? Well, GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product, and it's essentially the total value of all final goods and services produced within a country's borders over a specific period, typically a year or a quarter. Think of GDP as the ultimate measure of economic activity, it's like a giant scoreboard that tells us how much value an economy is generating. But here are a few important points about GDP, number 1. Market Value GDP measures the market value of goods, meaning it's about the monetary value, not the quantity. So, for example, a luxury car counts more toward GDP than a basic car because it has a higher price. Number 2. Final goods and services. We only count final goods, those sold to the end consumer. So, the cost of a pizza counts in GDP, but the cost of the cheese that went into making it does not. Number 3. Current production. GDP includes only goods and services produced within the specified time period. So if you sell an old phone, it won't count towards GDP because it was produced in the previous year. Alright, let's work with an example to make it concrete. Suppose that a very simple economy produces only four goods and services, i.e. examinations, pizzas, shoes, and cheese. Assume that all the cheese in this economy is used in the production of pizzas. We'll use this information to calculate GDP, remember that GDP is the market value of all final goods and services. Therefore, we need to calculate the value of the final goods and services listed in the table, i.e. examinations, pizzas, and shoes. Cheese would also be a final good if, for instance, a consumer bought it to use in a meal. But here we are assuming that restaurants buy all the cheese to use in making pizzas, so the cheese is an intermediate good, and its value is not included in GDP. Next, because the market value is equal to the quantity produced multiplied by the price per unit, we multiply the numbers under the quantity column by the numbers under the price per unit column. Finally, we add up the market values of eye examinations, pizzas, and shoes, which will give us $7,800 GDP for this example economy. Section 2. Limitations. While GDP is powerful, it does have its limitations. Here are a few things GDP leaves out, number 1. Household production, any goods or services produced at home, like cooking or childcare, don't count. Number 2. Underground economy, informal or unreported transactions, like a side hustle, are also not included. Number 3. Environmental impact, GDP doesn't account for negative effects like pollution. Number 4. Income distribution, finally, GDP tells us the size of the economic pie, but it doesn't tell us how that pie is divided among people. Section 3. Components of GDP. Now that we know what GDP is, economists usually break GDP down into four main components. Number 1. Consumption. This is what households spend on goods and services, everything from groceries to rent to vacations. In the US consumption is the largest component of GDP. Number 2. Investment. Now, when we talk about investment in GDP, we're not talking about stocks or bonds. Instead, it includes business investments in equipment, buildings, and inventory, as well as residential construction. Number 3. Government purchases. This is what the government spends on goods and services, such as public safety, defense, and infrastructure. It's important to note that transfer payments like Social Security are not included here since they're not payments for goods or services. Number 4. Net exports. This is exports minus imports. It shows the balance between what we sell to other countries and what we buy from them. Section 4. Real versus Nominal GDP. There are two types of GDP that economists often discuss, nominal GDP and real GDP. Nominal GDP measures the value of all goods and services at current prices, meaning it includes inflation. Real GDP, on the other hand, adjusts for inflation. It's based on constant prices at the base year, allowing us to see how much actual production has changed over time, without the distortion of price changes. Why does this matter? Let's say you spent $50 on groceries last year and $55 this year. If prices went up by 10%, you're not actually buying more groceries, you're just paying more for the same items. Nominal GDP would show an increase, 
but real GDP would adjust this increase out to reflect the actual quantity produced. Let's again work with the previous example to make it concrete. Suppose that a very simple economy produces only eye examinations, pizzas, and shoes. We'll use this information to compute real GDP for the year 2020, assuming that the base year is 2009. Remember that real GDP is the value of all final goods and services, evaluated at base year prices. So we calculate the values of the three goods and services using the quantities for 2020 and the prices for 2009. Then, like nominal GDP, we add up the values of eye examinations, pizzas, and shoes, which will give us $6,680 real GDP for this example economy. Section 5. Importance. Understanding GDP is essential for business practitioners for the following reasons. Number 1. Indicator of economic health. GDP measures a country's total economic output, offering a snapshot of its overall economic health. A growing GDP suggests a thriving economy, while a shrinking GDP can signal a recession. Number 2. Guides government policy. Policymakers use GDP data to make decisions on fiscal and monetary policy. For instance, if GDP growth slows, the government might increase spending or cut taxes to stimulate the economy. Number 3. Standard of living indicator, GDP per capita, which divides GDP by the population, helps gauge the average standard of living in a country. Higher GDP per capita usually correlates with better access to goods, services, and infrastructure. Number 4. Attracts foreign investment. A strong GDP growth rate can attract foreign investors, as it indicates a stable and profitable environment for business. This inflow of capital can further boost economic growth and job creation. Section 6. Summary. Gross domestic product. GDP measures the total value of goods and services produced within a country over a specific period. It's a critical economic indicator that reflects the health of a nation's economy, guiding policy decisions, investment, and insights into living standards. Understanding GDP helps assess economic growth, job opportunities, and overall economic stability, making it essential for informed decision-making by governments, businesses, and individuals. Alright, that's all for today's topic. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights on economics and business knowledge. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.